We see a scene where Firentia's grandfather has learned from Firentia's father about Perez tearing up the letter without hesitation for the sole reason that it put Firentia in a difficult position. Firentia's grandfather states to Firentia's father that there isn't a single thing to approve of about him. But that is good. Firentia's father laughs and tells his father that as Firentia's father, he wonders when they got so close. Firentia's grandfather then chuckles and starts thinking about Perez. As he's stomping on the letter, he mentions to Firentia's father that Astana's house is on his mother's side. He adds that the Anjanises may be conniving weasels, but it is a fact that they pushed out the Brown family and solidified their position as the grand noble house of the West. And since Astana's mother is the Empress, no matter how recklessly he behaves, as long as it's short of a rebellion, his supporters will remain firm. In contrast, Perez has nothing. Firentia's grandfather further asks Firentia's father about if he has thought about this as his decision could put Firentia in even greater danger. Firentia's father replies, I have. But, father, we can't avoid the storm by lowering our heads and holding our breath. As he's thinking about his sister's words from the past, Firentia's father adds that he thought that if he grew stronger and gained more power, that if he could shelter her from the storm, things would be fine. He further states to his father that Perez said that he doesn't want anything to put Firentia in a difficult situation. He could tell from those words that no matter what may come, Perez will always put Firentia's safety first, no matter how strong the encroaching storm may be. Firentia's father knows that this may be cruel to say about Perez when he too is only a child. However, it doesn't matter if it's selfish. If it will help Firentia in any way, then he wants to secure it for her, no matter what it is. Upon hearing these statements, Firentia's grandfather questions him if he means to say that it wasn't enough to request his help. He also clears his throat and adds that this is enough of that. He is Firentia's father, so they will do as he wishes. A playmate is a playmate. It won't carry any deeper meaning than that. As Firentia's grandfather pats his son on the shoulder, he adds that he will handle the response to Yovans and the preparations for Firentia to go to the palace. He just needs to only focus on his recovery. He further tells Firentia's father that if they gather all of the best doctors in the empire, then he's sure they will find the cure for a single illness. That is what the Lombardi fortune is here for. This statement makes Firentia's father feel loved. He also thanks his father. We then see the next scene where we see the doctor mentioning to Vs the disease that his brother has. The doctor also starts to expect that Vs would be devastated to hear that his little brother has a fatal illness. He further starts to reassure Vs that there's no need for him to give up hop yet. However, the doctor stops reassuring Vs and flinches after he hears him laughing. Vs then squeezes the doctor's shoulder and says, This is a sign from the heavens. Delay the disease? Whatever for. Listen to me, doctor. Isn't Trenbrew a very painful illness? So much so that it's worse to survive once your body has been paralyzed? How can I call myself a big brother to my beloved Galahan if I let him suffer such a fate? I can't allow that. Of course not. Upon hearing this response, the doctor is confused. V.S. clarifies to the doctor that he's saying that he shouldn't draw out his brother's pain with unnecessary things. The doctor asks Vise what he's saying. He adds that if his father hears of this, he will be furious with him. V.S. questions the doctor about if he thinks that his father will forgive him for being the one to spill the news of his little brother's illness. This question makes the doctor flinch again. The doctor also hesitantly states to Vise that he said he wanted to help Galahan since he's his little brother. As V.S. pats the doctor, he responds, Use your brain, doctor. Galahan may have caught my father's eye briefly, but now that things have changed, I would suggest that you and all of the staff reconsider exactly who you should be loyal to if you want to keep your jobs. V.S. further walks away and starts laughing loudly. We then transition to the next scene where we see Firenta all dressed up and is thinking about something. Suddenly, as Firenta realizes that someone is calling out to her. We learn that Perez was the one calling out her name, as he's staring at Ferencia, he questions her about what was she thinking so hard about that she didn't hear him calling her name. This question makes Ferencia realize that she was showing him around the garden. 
She also apologizes to Perez and tells him that there's something on her mind. Perez asks Firentia if it's about her father's illness. This question makes Firentia freeze. She then turns around and questions Perez for an explanation. Perez explains to Firentia that he's aware and that he was told that her father broke his leg. Perez also starts thinking about how on that day, Firentia's father didn't show any signs of trouble with his movements until the moment he fell. Perez further tells Firentia that after he arrived, he noticed that she has only been looking at herbology books. Nothing else. Only that. He also asks her if it's really that bad and if there is anything he can do. Perez further mentions to Firentia that he heard that there are a lot of things that she can do if she mentions the name of the Imperial family. She can summon the Imperial physician or he can talk to Caitlin and get her any book she needs. These statements make Firentia remember that Perez was there when her father's symptom first appeared. We then learn that Clearvon told Firentia that everyone who was present when the doctor mentioned that her father had Trenbro was ordered to keep it a secret. Firentia knows that they would be held to secrecy, since it will damage the clothing business if anyone catches wind of her father's illness. She is also aware that this means it would be better for fewer people to know until her father recovers. Firentia further believes that since Perez is smart and quick on his feet, it might be better to be honest with him than try to lie and get caught. Firentia then states to Perez that she doesn't need anything like that. She also confirms with him about if he can keep a secret. She adds that she's telling him because she trusts that he won't tell anyone else. Firentia further tells Perez that her father has Trenbrow. She reassures him that he doesn't have to worry. She adds that she knows someone who can discover the cure for it. Ferentia further mentions to Perez that this person is probably on her way here right now after receiving her letter. So her father will be fine. He'll get better and everything will be okay. Upon hearing this reassurance, Perez nods in agreement. He also takes out a bag of cookies from his pocket and questions Ferentia if she would like one. As Ferentia grabs one cookie, she wonders what it is and why Perez made chocolate chip cookies out of the blue. She also notices that the cookie is thick and wonders how much chocolate he put in it. Perez then states to her that this is the only things he knows will cheer someone up when they're having a hard time, so he made some before he came. Firentia is surprised to learn about this and confirms with him if he made this himself like the ruby he gave her earlier. She also wonders if he has anything better to do since he's the prince. Firentia then thanks Perez and tells him that she will have one. Firentia takes a bite of the cookie and learns that it's really yummy. Perez notices that Firentia really likes the cookie, which makes him really happy. He also asks her if she likes it. Firentia responds, Yeah, all this time, I thought our family's cook made the best cookies. There's really nothing you can't do, Perez. Perez mentions to Firentia that he's glad. He adds that he will make her lots later. As Firentia continues to eat the cookies, she wonders what he meant by later. She also notices that Perez is smiling. She further gets dazed and touched as she believes that Perez is really growing up to be a fine young man. All of a sudden, Firentia clasps Perez's hand, and as she's squeezing his hand, she says, Perez, try to avoid injuring your face during practice. Your looks are a national treasure. I can't imagine even a small scar on your pretty face. Keep growing up just like this, okay? Upon hearing this statement, Perez asks her if she really means it. As Firentia is turning around, she reassures him that of course she does. Perez then states to her that in his eyes, she's far prettier than him. Firentia questions Perez if he's making fun of her. Perez asks her how could he. He further leans into Firentia and as he's smiling, he tells her that she's pretty. Firentia is shocked and starts to blush. As she's trying to respond to Perez, she starts to stutter. Suddenly, someone interrupts the couple and asks them if they are birds of a feather. Firentia looks over to see who it is and realizes that it's Belazak. Belazak then laughs and states that he swung by because he heard that Perez came to visit Firentia's father, and it looks like they're both having a good time. Upon hearing this statement, Firentia couldn't believe this is happening again and wonders why Belazak is trying to start another fight. She also decides to forget it as she believes that she already has enough on her mind. She doesn't need to add a fly to it. 
Firenta then tells Perez not to mind him and to go. This statement makes Belezac snap. Belezac starts wondering if Firencia is so smug since Perez came to see her. He also believes that this is no big deal since he's just a bastard son. Perez then smirks and says, Good for you. You've got time to flirt with the second prince. That is what you were doing, right? Do you two get along because you're both half-bloods? I guess your low-born bloods spoke to each other? Perez turns around and starts to pull out his sword. However, Firencia stops him. She also mentions to Belezac that he's really dumb. Belezac asks her for an explanation. Firencia questions him about if he's already forgotten. She also explains to him that Grandfather told him not to come anywhere near her, and he banned him from calling her half-blood. She adds that it's only been three years. As she's laughing, she mentions to him that she's embarrassed to have such an idiot as her cousin. This explanation makes Belezac snap even more. He also clarifies with Firencia if she just called him an idiot. Firencia replies, and Lowborn? Then what does that make you when you're so far behind me? If I'm a half-blood, then you must be leftovers. Oh, and did you know? By insulting the second prince, you're also insulting the imperial blood that runs through him. This response makes Belezac tremble. Firencia then asks Belezac about what did he just say to Perez just now. Belezac responds, huh? Where's your evidence? Where's your evidence that I said anything? And you should be worrying about yourself. Running your mouth like that when you wouldn't last a single punch. How long do you think you'll live like this, huh? Upon hearing this question, Firentia guesses that Belezac can use his head a little if he's bringing up evidence. She then smirks and states to Perez to get rid of this. Perez agrees and quickly takes out his sword. He further approaches Belezac and puts his sword right on his neck. This action makes Belezac chill. He also squirms away. As he's doing so, he realizes that the aura wasn't just a rumor since he notices it on Perez's sword. Meanwhile, Firencia and Perez are staring down at Belezac. Firencia also starts thinking that the simplest way to handle a bully is to show him a stronger power. All of a sudden, she notices her little cousin Creamy peeking. She then takes a deep breath and tells Creamy to come towards her. Creamy is hesitant first. However, Firencia reassures him that it's okay. As she's smiling, she adds that they can play together and read some books if he likes. Upon hearing this reassurance, Creamy hops on over and hugs Firencia. After they are done hugging, Firenta sighs and thinks that there's no need to leave her cousin Craney to fall under their influence. We then learn that Craney, unlike Estaliu, was quite bright, but because he wasted time following that little crew, no one knew of his potential until after he enrolled at the academy. Now that Firentia thinks of it, since their house came to ruin before he graduated, she realizes that he couldn't have lived a very easy life either. As she's glaring at Belazac, she wonders how he could let his naive little brother get involved in this mess. Firencia then mentions to Belezic that this is his last warning and that he should better watch his words. She adds that if he doesn't want to run his mouth into something else, he can't handle. That is, she further calls out Astalia's name, which makes him flinch and states to him that she has no idea why he's still following Belezic around after what happened three years ago. However, he is her cousin, so this is her first and last bit of advice to him. She adds that following Belizac will get him nowhere and advises him to follow a new leader to follow. As Firencia turns around, she tells Craney and Perez that they should go. The two of them agree with Firencia and start leaving with her. As they are walking away, Craney questions Firencia about what types of books are they going to read. Firencia asks Craney what he wants to read and mentions to him that she has all sorts of books in her library. Craney states to her that he likes books with knights. Meanwhile, Belisac is trembling in fear. He then turns around and starts walking the other way. As Belisac is walking the other way, Firencia comes to a halt, turns around and starts thinking about how something is strange. She doubts that Belisac has forgotten her grandfather's warning and wonders what he was thinking, coming all this way to pick a fight. Perez then questions Firencia about if anything is wrong, Firenta reassures him that it's nothing and that they should get going. She also decides that she doesn't have the time to waste on flies like him. She knows that it's been over 10 days since she sent that letter to the academy and believes that the person will arrive any day now. 
We then transition to the next scene where we see Estira stepping out of a carriage. Suddenly, someone calls out to her. Estira looks over to see who called her and realizes that it's Ferencia. Ferencia then welcomes her back and thanks her for coming. We also learn that 11 days after her father's symptoms started, Estira finally arrived. Firencia already had a chemist's room prepared for Estira ahead of time. She then shows Estira the room. Upon seeing the room, Estira becomes really happy. As Estira is analyzing all of the objects in the room, Firencia starts remembering how in her last life, it took five years for Estira to create the treatment at the academy. She also believes that in this life, thanks to her grandfather and Baruchel's recommendations, Estira will be able to focus without the hazing of other chemists. Firencia further believes that her father will definitely get better, or so she thought. We then see the next scene where the doctor is yelling at Firencia's grandfather. The doctor asks Firencia's grandfather that if the cure could be discovered by a little girl who spent three years at the academy, then why would countless doctors have failed to treat Trenbrew and call it an incurable disease? He also questions him about if they are all quacks and liars. The doctor further mentions to Firenta's grandfather that he doesn't believe the fact that Estira happened to be looking into a cure for Trenbrow at the academy, and that she spent her precious time at the academy studying a rare disease with barely any patience. Estira is speechless upon hearing these statements from the doctor. The doctor then states to Firenta's grandfather that there is an undeniable difference between treating a disease and creating an ointment. As the resident doctor of the Lombardi family, it is his duty to prioritize Firencia's father's health and well-being. Therefore, he could never allow the use of an amateur's experiment on Firencia's father. As the doctor gulps and is pointing at Astyra, he starts thinking about how this is ridiculous since she's nowhere near a doctor. However, he is aware that the research into Trenbrew at the Academy began to show great promise. The doctor further wonders if this is all that Astyra has been doing at the Academy, this also makes him realize that if the medicine improves Firencia's father's state even a little, then he will lose his position here at the Lombardi house. However, he is aware that it isn't as though there are any other options. All of a sudden, the doctor looks over at Firencia and calls out to her for an explanation. As Firencia is staring at the doctor, she can understand why he distrusts Astyra. Although she believes that he's taking a more hardline stance than she expected, Firencia is also aware that she's the only one who knows for certain that Estira's medicine will be able to treat Trenbro. She further realizes that the fact is that when it comes to an incurable disease, one that guarantees death no matter what a person tries, neither the trustworthiness of a treatment nor the side effects of a medication matter. Firenci knows that whether this medicine will be used or not really comes down to the doctor. She then states to the doctor that he said so himself. Everyone who has tried to cure this disease has failed. She further asks the doctor if he has any other solutions. The doctor starts to answer her question. However, Firentia interrupts him and tells him that she doesn't think Estira has any reason to lie. She adds that, as he said, her studies are sponsored by the Lombardi family. She further questions him about what reason does she have to harm her father. Firencia then glances at her father and mentions to him that she would like him to trust Estira's medication. Firencia's father is surprised upon hearing this. He then smiles and states to Estira that he heard that she rushed here after receiving Firencia's letter. Estira bows and tells Firencia's father that as someone who has been blessed by the grace of the Lombardis, it was the only natural course of action. Firencia's father mentions to her that if she doesn't mind, he would like to see the research material and the list of ingredients that were used in her medication. He adds that he would like to verify for himself what went into it, seeing as he will be the one taking it. Estira agrees with Firencia's father and states to him that if he looks here, he can see that the medication uses a herb called rosin as the main ingredient along with a combination of various other herbs. She adds that the results of the combination and the side effects are listed on this page. Upon hearing this statement, Firencia brightens up. Firencia's father also tells Estira that he's not familiar with many of these herbs. 
Estira mentions to Ferencz's father that the descriptions of the herbs can be found here, and further information can be found by checking the books mentioned in the footnote. As Ferencz's father is flipping through the pages, he states to Estira that he understands and that this research material certainly gives him confidence in her medicine. However, he would like to be thorough about his decision. He adds that he would like to take the rest of the day to look through the books listed in the footnotes before he takes the medicine. He further questions Estira about if this would be all right with her. As Estira is beaming with happiness, she agrees with his decision. The doctor also shouts out that this is madness and asks Firencia's father about how can he make such a decision. He adds that he will absolutely regret this. The doctor then turns around and slams the door shut. Once he's gone, Firencia's grandfather questions Firencia's father about if he'll be all right. This question surprises Firentia's father. He then states to his father that the truth is that the feeling in his other foot has been strange since this morning. As he smiles, he adds that with the situation being what it is, he thinks it would be better than doing nothing. Like Firentia said, it isn't as though there are any other treatments. And since Firentia summoned Astyra for his sake, he would like to trust her skills. Upon hearing this response, Firentia agrees with her father in her head and believes that it doesn't matter if the disease is progressing differently from her memory. She also believes that once her father takes the medicine, he'll be cured. That's what matters to her. She further reassures herself that it's going to be okay. We then transition to the next scene where Firentia asks Estira about what does she mean and how can the medicine not have any effect. Estira replies by telling her that to be exact. It isn't that it has no effect, but it only seems to be half as effective as what she expected. The doctor also snaps and mentions that he said that they shouldn't take that so-called medicine since it's unreliable. One of the servants further tries to calm the doctor down and requests him to lower his voice since Ferencia's father is resting. Firenta then staggers and couldn't believe this. She also starts thinking about how Estira is definitely the person who created the cure, and now that he's taken it, her father should be cured. She further wonders what she should do if the medicine isn't effective. Suddenly, Clarevin slams open the door and calls out to Firencia. He also mentions to her that the Angena's family is trying to steal the clothing store. He adds that their carriage is already headed to the Imperial Palace, to request His Majesty's reappraisal of the clothing shop. Firencia is shocked upon hearing this news from Clarivan. All of a sudden, the twins slam open the door as they are huffing and puffing. They then rush over to her and hug her. As they are hugging and squeezing her, Firencia questions the twins about what's wrong. The twins reply, we heard, Firencia, that Lord Galahan has Trenbrow. This response shocks Clarivan. Firencia then pushes the twins away and asks them what they are talking about and where did they hear that? She also starts thinking about how only a handful of those close to her father and the doctor know about this. Firencia is certain that her grandfather would have instructed them to keep silent. The twins then state to Firencia that the maids told them and that everyone's talking about her father. As the doctor is tiptoeing away, the twins question her what's going to happen to him and her. This response shocks Firencia and makes her realize that if the staff is talking about, then that means the entire estate knows. We then transition to another scene where Firencia is sitting down and calming herself down. She's aware that it's imperative to keep a level head at times like this. She knows that she has to think and wonders how can she solve this problem. Firencia then calls out to Estira. This makes Estira twitch. Firencia also tells Estira that she said the medicine has some effect just not as much as she had anticipated. She further mentions to her to tell her what the problem is as exactly and as efficiently as possible. We then learn that Estira originally wanted to research treatments for the poor. In Firentia's last life, Estira was pursuing that research when she stumbled across the medical combination that treated Trenbro by accident. Compared to that Estira, Firentia is aware that this one is younger and less experienced, so it makes senses that she is more of a novice in this matter. Firencia further believes that this may be her fault for focusing on the results and rushing Estira. Estira then hesitantly states to Firencia that just mixing herbs together doesn't guarantee that each one will produce the same effect it had on its own. 
She adds that the ingredients can amplify or even negate each other, and so there has to be an ingredient that maintains a balance. Upon hearing this statement, Firentia asks her about what does this mean? Estyra responds, the treatment needs a critical ingredient to stabilize the compounded herbs. Firentia questions Estyra about if she thinks that if she finds this ingredient that she'll be able to complete the medicine. Estyra nods in agreement and tells Firentia that she's certain of all of the ingredients and their proportions. She adds that she focused on her research for the last three years in order to keep her promise to her. The problem is that there are so many herbs that go into the medicine. She has been consistently experimenting. However, she hasn't found this ingredient. Upon hearing this statement, Firentia starts thinking about how she knows that Astyra would have worked diligently on her request. If that wasn't the case, then there's no way that her medication could even have half of the desired effect on Trenbro, a disease that has long been called incurable. As Firentia is grinning, she further realizes that her decision was rushed, but it wasn't completely wrong since Estira's medicine isn't far from completion. Firentia then slowly goes over her memories from her previous life once more. She starts to remember that she felt empty upon learning that the cure was developed after her father's death. And to fill that emptiness, she read Estira's interview and every single article relevant to her research. Firentia further starts to think about what she read. We then see the past where Estira is being in. During that interview, Estira mentioned to the interviewee that whenever she hit a stumbling block in her research, she thought back to the path she walked to reach that point. Why she began to research herbs, what she wanted to do, her foundational thoughts and determination. The interviewee asked her if those thoughts actually helped her. Estira replied, yes, they did. The foundations of my research have always been the medical knowledge from my home, the roots of my medical knowledge come from the south of the empire where I grew up. The knowledge and experience I accumulated back then have always helped. I had the answers all along. We are then back in the present. Ferentia knows that the path may have changed, but the recipe for the medicine has not. She also believes that perhaps the Astyra from back then and the one now both came across the same stumbling block in their research. Firentia further believes that since the academy is located to the north, it may have been difficult for Estyra to acquire the herbs from the south that she needed. Firentia then states to Estyra that she said that, because of the wide variety of herbs, the combinations led to endless possibilities. She adds that then they should revisit the herbs. She knows have stabilizing properties one by one. This means all of the herbs from the east west, north, and especially the herbs from the south that she's most familiar with. Upon hearing this statement, Estyra questions Firentia for more clarification. All of a sudden, Estyra realizes something. As she nods in agreement, she tells Firentia that she'll create a list as quickly as possible. Orthaya mentions to her that this is good and that she may leave. She adds that the important thing is to be thorough and not to be hasty and risk leaving anything out. She further states to Astyra to not forget this. Astyra nods in agreement. Suddenly, Clarivan bangs his hand on the table to get Firentia's attention. As Clarivan is about to speak, Firentia interrupts him and tells him that she knows that their matter is urgent as well, but curing her father's disease is more important than anything. She adds that she hopes he understands. Clarivan takes a deep breath and agrees with Firentia. He also mentions to her that since they're pressed for time, he will get straight to the point then. He adds that the news of her father falling ill with Trenbro could be fatal, just as they're about to join hands with the Sershaws and begin expanding the business. Firentia states to Clarivan that as a grand business of the Empire, the Emperor wouldn't allow it to remain in uncertain hands, especially when it's become ingrained in the daily lives of the citizens. Clarivan tells Firentia that this means that the Angenases will attempt to convince His Majesty by pointing out that someone must continue to operate the store to reduce the potential absence and ensure that the citizens' lives can continue peacefully, is that someone being themselves. As he slams his hand on the table, Clarivan mentions to Firentia that their carriage is bound to be entering the imperial grounds as they speak. Furthermore, now that the news of her father's illness has spread, there is another urgent matter to address. 
They must placate the person who will undoubtedly be enraged by this news, which is Madame Sershaw. Please make sure to subscribe. Special thanks to all of my Patreon members. Why not watch another manhole recap on my channel by clicking on this video right here.